The posse of young guns on the Geico Honda team have been hunting down the most wanted man of the 250 class all season, Monster Energy Pro Circuit's Blake Baggett. At Southwick, round nine, their posse grew by one to five total with the debut of rookie Zach Bell, who opened some eyes right out of the gate. And I think it's gonna be what? Zach Bell with the whole shot in his first pro race. Will Hahn and Justin Bogle would not be factors with bad starts and finishes outside the top 10. On what is considered to be his home track, Justin Barsha would not take the advantage to gain points on Baggin, riding for a 7-4 day and fifth overall. The man of the day for Geico Honda, however, would be Eli Tomac. A dominating win in the first moto led to an 8th place start in the second, but riding 4-5 to five seconds a lap faster, he quickly caught leaders Roxon and Baggett, only to catch himself on one of Southwick's wooded locals. In fact, he just caught Baggett! Oh, oh it goes, goes down, down in the tree turn! He would finish second overall. Round 10 and another crack at Baggett's lead would be at the infamous Unadillo. He'll play in the rocks. You know why they call it Unadilla, right? I have no idea why it's Unadilla. Young guy, Mike Morocco, came out here, and because of the rocks, he debuted the first chest protector. The big turtle? I know nothing about this. Is it because of the rock invented the chest protector here? Some kind of wolverine. Bigfoot slash maybe bear all mixed in one or something. Sasquatch? Yeah. No, Snake! <laughs> But it is, isn't the jungle out back here. What it does mean in the world of motocross is simply tough, or maybe relentless, unforgiving, punishing. The steep terrain and rocky, unpredictable turf has separated the men from the boys since 1969. DeCoster, Hannah, Johnson, me, and Carmichael are all names that have conquered Unadilla. As the season winds down, teams start seeing how their new riders for the next season fare by letting them race the last few nationals. Rookie Zach Bell had already started proving himself at Southwick the week before. It was great uh, until I crashed. I got the whole shot and was leading for five minutes or uh, five laps half of the race, and uh, just kind of let Eli go by me. And uh, he was going for the points championship, so I tagged behind him. He was able to see what the pace was of the riders up front. Hopefully this weekend it'll go the same way off the start and last a little longer. You gotta be ready for the rocks. Dealing with the pounding roost is part of racing. Roost laced with New York rocks is another thing entirely. It's still pretty wet, so maybe the rocks haven't completely come up yet. He only wears it under chest protector. He doesn't like anything over, really hard, blocking heat, making him hot or anything, and he hates hand guards, so he'll just tough it out. He's not really a hand guard guy, so unless it gets really bad out there. Hand guards are for pussies. <laughs> Life of a professional motocrosser is very hard. You have to train your body, race in dangerous conditions, and keep up on your image. Dude, a dude told me in the autograph line this morning, he was like, his daughter was like, hey, can I get a picture? And I said, yeah, no problem. And he's like, oh, Will Hahn doesn't like girls, so I gotta, I gotta change my image, dude. This is not good. Like, he was dead serious. He was dead serious. In all seriousness, motocross is not for the faint of heart, and no one knows that better than Mr. Hahn. In Moto 1 of Southwick the week before, the sport would see an act of sportsmanship that in the heat of the usual battles was extremely rare. That's, that's the 58 Han. of Hahn. Uh, that's uh, Martin in his, I believe that's his first pro race, the Van Martin and McDade. Will is trapped under his bike with a blazing hot exhaust pipe searing through his alias gear and unable to move. Fellow racer Mike McDade, who also went down, sees Hahn trapped and stopped to urgently help Will get out from under the dangerous bike and situation. I seen him down, I have to go, you know, I dropped mine again and ran back over and uh, I lifted it off him. And McDade, I think it was, picked the bike up off him, which was really cool. Otherwise he would have been stuck there for a while. And then it took a little, a little while for him to grab it, so I'm like, come on man, grab it. <laughs> for him to drop his bike and come over and pick my bike off me, uh, says a lot about, his, you know, about him and, and uh, what he's about. It's these times that you see what a true brotherhood the sport of motocross is. You just want to jump on there, don't you? After you and your dad have worked on your bikes your entire career, it's sometimes hard to give up old habits being a factory rider. You want to jump on it and set the lever so bad, it's, it's eating you up inside. 17 years, is a hard habit to break. Now see, now you got him on. A little high maybe? 
little hot? Do I take a little off? Sure. The right suspension setup at Unadilla has always been the difference between winning and, well, not. Getting it right for five different bikes, riders, and mechanics takes skill and diplomacy. What? What? No sag. No sag? Yeah. Just run it as high as possible? Yeah. You want more? How does that feel? It feels good. These, the guys are on this new side. I, I was good with it. I felt comfortable. It's not that it's just lazy. No, it's like dealing with both. Preschoolers. That is going to be a good motorbike track. What happened to my guy? The guy that's supposed to ride the bike. After all the preparations for the abuse and the hope for points gained on Baggett that lie ahead, Moto One would prove disappointing. Yes, youngster Zach Bell again proved his whole shot in Southwick the week before was not a fluke. The kid can start still has some things to figure out. Uh, that is Zach Bell again. Zach Bell for the second week in a row has got the whole shot in Moto 1. Roxon is learning the tracks and learning this series. And there goes Bell. I was just going to say Bell is uh, making Roxon somewhat of a veteran in this situation. But it was behind where the problems were. Both Justin Barsha and Eli Tomac would not get the starts needed to chip away at Baggett's points lead. They are 10th uh, and 11th. And there goes Tomac able to make the move. They both could only muster a 6th and 7th, while Red Bull KTM's Ken Roxon would find his season best, taking a much-needed win for the German rider. Welcome into the record books, Ken Roxon. He takes the first photo here at Unadilla. Tomac, after a bad start, going to have to settle for 6th, and it's going to be even worse for his teammate Barsha, who finishes in 7th. Bogle would finish 11th, with Hahn at 9th and Bell 8th. How good? Uh, I don't know. I might have been at the bottom of Screw You. He said he got into some guys that went down. Not only do they turn the wrenches, but mechanics provide useful observations during the race, something every rookie needs. And you were just going through all the rough stuff. Just make it easier on yourself. Yeah. Let you carry more speed in and in turn carry more speed out. Got nothing else to do today. Might as well have some fun. Yeah. Race some No footers. Just save it to the last lap at least. Right? Ryan Dungey wrapped up his second and KTM's first National 450 Motocross title officially after Moto 1, with two events left to go. The 250 class was not the same one-sided battle, and series leader Blake Baggett would have his hands full trying to stay on top. Moto 2 would show why. And Barsha going to get things started off right. I believe he's out front on the 20. Yes, he is, and he's got Bogle and Bell. His teammates right there with him. Geico Honda has one, two, three, four. Is that all five riders in the top six? I think so. That Justin Barsha would hold on to his lead of seven seconds over his teammate Tomac, only to lose it and falling behind by as much as 18 seconds to the unstoppable Tomac. Whoa. Eli Tomac is now in the lead. Not sure what has happened here to Barsha. With Tomac and Barsha in the front, third place became a battle between young Justin Bogle and the experienced world champion Marvin Miskin, who was racing for his first overall win in America. All he can do is try to win this moto and hope for the best. If Bogle can get around Muskan, it might give Tomac the overall win. Justin would lose the battle, settling for fourth, but prove that he could ride with the lead group for the duration, and they should all get used to it. Here is Muskan, the Red Bull KTM, and here comes Bogle! This is it. This is for the overall. This is for history. A bittersweet weekend for the Young Guns crew came to a close at a famous track with the funny name. And Eli Tomac has got the W here in moto number two. First moto frustration on all fronts led to expected dominance and some flashes of rookie talent to come in moto two. We got things turned around for the second moto. You know, and Eli rode a great race. And, you know, Justin got, got second, so it's a good turnaround. Everybody rode solid. Definitely went all out last lap but uh, got really close, didn't let off through the mechanics area corner at all, but close, no cigar, I'm happy. Oh, it's frustrating because I, I did feel really good that second moto and uh, didn't do anything with it. You have to congrats to Marv. That's his first overall. Marvin won overall. If these riders are looking to make the title chase at the last two races exciting, they're doing a great job, but they shouldn't wait much longer. I was just hoping there was guys in between them. It, it was good because Justin was there, so. I know I was at least going to get third for the one that gives you so many points. It's just, you, you need those for the overall. I am on peace. We're going to Steel City. He's a German living the life of a Southern California motocross pro. 
Come hang with us as we hang for a day with Red Bull KTM's Ken Roxon next week at AlliesSports.com backslash YouTube. Do you want a hand getting on the mic? Kindergarten? Ah!